Okay, thank you. So now we can start with the second slot of the presentation. And the first one would be Minteos uh, with Marco Brini. Marco Brini, I funded Minteos and we help to reduce natural and industrial disasters. The way we do that is uh, we focus on nature. Remember when you were a kid and uh, you were thinking that uh, trees could talk to you or the rocks or the wind? We think you were right. We think really that the nature talked to us. The only thing that we need is a translator. We need to understand it. We need to listen to it. So this is why we designed this tiny device this is a nature translator. It translates the language of the nature in the language of the human, and it brings the information where we are, on the internet and on, on our mobile phone. So what, what, what do we need? Sorry. What do we do? What do we need that for? I got it. <laughs> well, we started from safety. We can do many things with this powerful tool, but safety is priority. So the nature can tell us if there's going to be a wildfire or a flood or a bad contamination because nature talks slowly to each of us. It sends signals. So, for example, in Russia there was the bad wildfire, estimated 300 billion of damage. We could have avoided that because we could have predicted, as we did in Switzerland last year. Or in Hungary, there was the bad, bad collapsing or a, of a dam, and also that we could have avoided. So we are already doing this. Uh, this is real. Uh, we have project, real project. For example, in Rome, trees can warn you if a wildfire is going to be. Or, <clears throat> for example, in Athens, you are taking a bath. The sea is going to inform you if there is going to be a contamination by the sewage. There are many other projects we did thanks to our powerful operating system of the nature, which runs on different modules, special purpose, very low power, unique. We are selling to public sector and private sector in four different countries in Europe. We have negotiation ongoing in other countries. This is for phase, phase first, uh, where we had to prove the concept. So we have the, the technology. We designed the application, I've, I've explained you. And uh, we made uh, six products, six patent, and 10 customer paying. We are now switching to phase two, where we are going to enable our business partner to create their own technology upon our uh, operating system, which will sell as a cloud, and uh, we prove that this is working too. The project in Athens was realized by a partner, it was the biggest we did. About competitor, uh, we are in the Internet of Things sector, there are very good competitor, the best certainly does network, uh, we consider them the Ferrari, but you can't go anywhere with a Ferrari. So we are the kind of the Land Rover of the Internet of Things. We are the wireless sensor network for outdoor application. Our communication can go one, more than one kilometer. They can stay there up to 10 years. And uh, the system is easy, light, and plug and play. I was lucky enough to meet a talented guy which helped me uh, doing all these accomplishments. We are doing about half a million revenue. Uh, we have a good pipeline ahead, but we can do much better, much faster. So we are looking for three plus seven million in two years, and we plan to give to have a return of investment within five years, at least twenty fold. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Okay, so next startup will be Mop Up with Alessandro Rizzoli. Uh, 
Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Alessandro Rizzoli, and I'm the founder and CEO of MOPAP. MOPAP stands for Measure of Performance. We help developers to keep track of their revenues, downloads, and we help also them to publish apps on mobile stores. We are developers, and I got mad because we developed application, we published in three stores, and it was a hell of a time trying to track the downloads, the revenues, and we didn't have any figures. It takes a lot of time to do that. At that time, we started to develop this application for ourselves. This was our pain. Then we realized that actually this information could be really useful also for other players, other developers. Now there are more than 100 app stores out there and developers want to take advantage of this. But there are more than any developers can actually handle. That's why Mopap comes handy. We are live. We started in November and we, got, we are getting a lot of traction. We already have 1,000 developers that published uh, 3,000 apps through different stores. Uh, don't take my word for granted. Just go online, try it out our demo, or register your apps. We are going to be actually the uh, one-stop shop for developers. We're going to help them to track their revenues and also help them to price rightly their application and to publish the application on more stores and different stores. We aggregate all the information directly from the stores, so actually don't even have to change any line of your code. Your application is good to go. You can use our system right now. So this is the market. It's incredible. It's, it's increasing at the speed of light, striping every year. And actually, there are almost uh, around one uh, million halves out there in all these hundred stores. This up stores model is here really to stay. And we had uh, come up with a new uh, a key figure which is called Upload. An Upload is an application that you deploy on one store. And actually we found that developers are willing to pay at least nine dollars uh, for each Upload here. So that's our uh, niche market. We're going to provide a monthly recurring fee and with our unique features developers we really be able to publish apps on more stores so taking advantage of this new big ecosystem we're going to help them also to price the apps at the right price actually helping them to increase their maximum revenues uh, this is our third startup uh, the other two are profitable and live and we have a lot of passion Actually, in fact, we invest our own money to bootstrap. We started uh, last year. We are uh, live since uh, November. And uh, we built a system that is already functional. But now we feel it is time to scale, to grow up the team. And that that's why we are looking for this round. In this round, we're going to reach the 30,000 developers mark, uh, 70,000 hubs. Uh, registered and we're gonna be cash flow positive within this round so it's actually really the right time it's a huge potential there's a huge market and we are ahead of competitors we are ahead of time so we have traction come on board round thank you very much Thank you. So we are going to hand this lot with Piero Rivisigno. There is going to present his startup. There is Glossom. Good evening. My name is Piero Rivisigno. I'm the CEO and founder of Glossom.com, a social media network for visual creatives. Uh, the team that uh, uh, Glossom is made up by myself. Uh, serial uh, entrepreneur with two successful exits on in uh, with 
two American companies, and uh, three other great guys with great expertise in marketing, um, software development, and uh, design. The problem we're trying to address is the following. Uh, these days, there is an explosion of uh, visual objects like photos, uh, videos, images, but none um, of, uh, of those, uh, the fruition of those uh, images, it's quite nice when it, there is a single image, a single video, but when it comes to multiple images, that becomes a little bit difficult. There is nothing that allows to create and share in a very easy and nice way uh, composition of a multiple Im images curated images. So that's the problem that we are going to address. The only way today you can uh, um, uh, have this look at multiple images or videos is just with traditional slideshow. slideshow. It's like the uh, printed uh, book metaphor. That's the main idea. What, uh, the awesome collection is a synthesis of visual what we are trying to do is we are create a grid. On this grid, we drag and drop uh, the images or the videos, and we resize uh, those images, those videos, according to uh, the requirement of the users. So they can fit together in a unique composition that uh, lately can be shared smoothly on the, uh, on the web, on me, uh, uh, social media like uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Tumblr, or other blog. Blogger, uh, WordPress, and so on. And you can see that you share the overall images. You can click and point on, on each single thumbnail. So it's not just the single image fruition. That's a very key point for us. And uh, again, uh, the composition can be made up by video and photos, all videos, all, all images. So we like to think about the collection as a visual snippet of curated content. Think about the collection has the equivalent of a tweet. Where the tweet is made up by 140 characters, we have some constraint just to show the composition of images that can be, uh, um, can be flow of the of digital world. So, um, the potential market, it's, it's global and it's large. I mean, uh, there are the content generator, people that for business and uh, uh, professional credits like photographers, designer, all the people that works with uh, 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 images basically can do it. And people that uh, um, get this content. Um, the product is there. Uh, it's been launched. Uh, we have 13,000 uh, members. Uh, the biggest market for us is USA and uh, uh, there are already more than 400,000 uh, items loaded. The competition. Basically, I mean, uh, we have this unique concept of the visual curator and the collection for creating this rich uh, experience from the sharing point of view and from the composition point of view. Uh, the business model is based on freemium and sponsorship. And uh, uh, we are looking for, eight, we already invested $800,000 and we are looking for $1 million. And uh, just to meet some of the major milestones, there are going to be the f uh, 500,000 euros, uh, dollars, and uh, sorry, users, and uh, uh, to meet this, the revenues. And that's Glossom. Right now, we are basically using the, uh, the social media application for doing that. Most of our tra the, the, the first uh, source of traffic for us is uh, Facebook. It's not Google, for instance. So we are using that and the sharing mechanism, the, me mechanism, the commenting, the, um, the like, uh, it's, producing, uh, it's getting us uh, most of, uh, of the traffic. What we did in the be very beginning, we focused on uh, professional. Right now, we are moving to uh, prosumers, and the idea is to go to the general market because there is a big value on what we are doing, what we think. 
Marco, what are your costs and what are your what do you uh, charge for the service? I, you have to build the hardware. Yeah, we build the hardware right now because there is no hardware of the chef that meets our requirement. In the future, we expect the market evolving and focusing uh, much more on the software side. So the cost for production are direct costs to us are very low because we englobate all the value chain. We have the operating center software, we have the operating um, the operating system on the gateway and uh, the library, everything has, made, has been made by us, including the protocol. That, that allow us to be very cost effective and to be very fast to supply new kind of project to the customers. So we have about 85, 90% profit. So 10%, 15 co uh, direct cost on the project. We usually charge um, to the customer, we try this time, uh, to charge as much as possible on the first project and then uh, it's a 20 percent fee yearly fee for the service we plan in the future when uh, we get money so we won't be in uh, needing to get the cash from the market to be much faster and just uh, not charging directly the first cost so much but having a split cost over the time how much does each sensor cost you these things yeah. the one I showed you, uh, well, the, the network node I showed you, uh, cost for production in uh, quantities, it's about uh, $7 unit price, unit cost. Uh, just to give you an example, um, we had a very big tender, which unfortunately didn't proceed because it was in Greece. And uh, <laughs> lucky me. And... Uh, we made a request for quotation um, and uh, everything was done, so we had the whole list. Uh, comparing with the, com with the other compet uh, competitor, the price, they were 50-fold more expensive. So where they were putting one sensor, we were putting 50. This gives you an idea in outdoor applications. Question about um, uh, mobile device on the road. Um, it feels to me that this is a market which is pretty busy in the U.S. between Flurry and Tapjoy, and both players actually make their their kit for free to developers because they will make money on the back end, <coughs> you know, sending installations to developers. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys try and get developers to pay for your uh, your infrastructure. Um, do you think that you will be able to sustain that? Well, thank you very much for the question because actually most of the time they're a bit confusing about in-app uh, analytics and you know, revenue analytics. Uh, we're not competing with those guys, and then actually we're going to integrate those guys in our dashboards. So, for example, Flurry. Uh, because what they do, like helping, you know, customer, our customer, we're on the same side, uh, to have more insight of what the user is using. And then with our dashboard, we can say, that kind of user, this kind of pattern, it, you know, uh, puts you on that table, and you have going to have this revenue or that revenue. So you need both, actually, a uh, key indicator to figure out what you're going to do about your app. So actually, we are going to be the, the hub spot for developers where we can connect all sorts of analytics. And how do you sort that out? Oh, they have open APIs. Mm -hmm. So actually, our customers are more willing to, to use our, our application because they don't have to change the code. Why their customers, they need to change the code, they use the SDK. Marco, when you put a bunch of sensors out for one customer, uh, can you use those same sensors for another customer? Or how many do you need to spread around the world before you, you, you can cover every customer? But can you use the same sensors for more than one customer? Yeah, yeah we can, depending on the application. Uh, I was talking with uh, with a guy yesterday in San Diego. Was telling me that the, the houses just sleep over, and uh, we were evaluating, for example, um, a system for predict this problem so they can act before it's happening. In this case, for example, the same sensor can serve more than a house, and the same sensor can provide more than one service. So also, the interesting idea is that. 
uh, once we are going to put a sensor, we also build an infrastructure. It's like having uh, the infrastructure of the GSM, which serves the people, but for the nature. So once we have the re repeater, let's say the gateway, uh, then if you are going to serve another customer or are creating another application uh, which can be managed centrally, multiple application, you, you, just, you have just to add some sensor there, so it's much cheaper. And uh, there are kind... Does it actually sense? Sense. <laughs> well, the beauty... Humidity, change, what, what does it sense? The, all of it. The beauty of it is that uh, it's very flexible. Having the infrastructure done, we have an universal interface which, which enables us very easy to integrate new sensor. So it will take just one, two weeks for us to integrate a new sensor and put it on the market. So we have already about 50 sensors integrated, toxic gases, explosive gases, quality of the air, quality uh, of the liquids, or uh, movement, or inclination, presence of people, and uh, uh, intensity of flight, anything you want to sense. So the, the beauty is that we have a very efficient uh, n uh, neuronal system. Then you just change the sense or add the sense and you will go everywhere. 